And now it's my uh, great pleasure to invite Ray Gilmartin to the stage. Ray is a long-serving CED trustee. Uh, Ray served as chairman, president, and CEO of Becton Dickinson, and then was chairman and CEO of Merck from 1994 to 2005. After that, Ray became a professor at the Harvard Business School, where he taught in the MBA program. And tonight, uh, it is a very special award to have one CEO of Merck present the award to another CEO of Merck. So, Ray Gilmartin. Well, thank you very much, Steve, and it's a great honor for me to have the opportunity to present this award. I've set an impossible goal. In the spirit of uh, the 150th uh, anniversary of the Gettysburg Address, which was only <laughs> three minutes long, is I'm going to tr attempt to convey to you in that time period uh, what a remarkable person that Ken Fraser is and how deserving he is of this award. The Committee for Economic Development uh, basically is pleased, as I am, to present the Excellence in Public Policy Award to Ken, who is Chairman, President, and CEO of Merck and Company. And I'm particularly honored to have the privilege of presenting this award to a person that I admire and respect greatly. The, this award honors an individual in the private or public sector who demonstrates a strong commitment to public policy in the individual private, public or private sector, but importantly, who demonstrates a, song, a strong commitment to public policy in the nation's best long-term interest. Merck's values um, are best expressed by the statement that George W. Merck made, George W. Merck, the modern-day founder of Merck, in a speech to the Virginia Medical College in 1950, in which he famously said, we must always remember that medicine is for the people and not for the profits. If we remember that, the profits will follow. And I think that a, a variation on this statement characterizes Merck's approach to public policy advocacy. And that, therefore, uh, the approach could best be described as we must always remember that the public policies we advocate must be in the best interest, the best long-term interests of society, not in the company's short-term self-interest. And if we remember that, the public interest will be served and our interests will be served as well. And these values have uh, allowed Merck to be very influential in a number of very critical areas in terms of access to medicines globally and also to advancing education. Few executives have led their organization with as much commitment to these values and with as much integrity as Ken Fraser. And as a result, Merck has played an influential and successful role in advancing math and science education, expanding access to medicines here in the U.S. and the rest of the world for those less fortunate, and in advocating policies that encourage economic growth, innovation, and competitiveness. This values-based approach to policy advocacy extends from global to local. In 2012, Merck employees clocked an astounding 221,000 hours of volunteer work to promote, the well, to promote the welfare of local communities. In addition to its commitment to serve the public interest, Merck is also committed to transparency about its advocacy. In 2013, for the third year in a row, Merck was awarded the top ranking for political disclosure by the Wharton School of Center for Political Accountability. I'm honored at this point to welcome Ken Fraser to the stage to accept the Committee for Economic Development's 2013 Excellence in Public Policy Award. Thank you, Ray. Good evening, everyone. My Merck colleagues and I are deeply honored to receive the CED's Distinguished Performance Award for Excellence in Public Policy. And personally, for me, it's an even more special occasion and privilege to receive this award from my mentor and predecessor, Ray Gilmartin, who his time at Merck exemplified and embodied uh, what our mission was all about. Ray knows firsthand the deep commitment shared by all Merck people, both here in the United States and around the world. First, we share an unwavering commitment to our mission to discover, develop, 
and provide innovative products and services that save and improve lives around the world. And second, we are committed to upholding the highest standards of ethics and integrity in all that we undertake. In our view, innovative and productive research and development is the only, only sustainable way to create true and enduring value to all of our stakeholders, and we remain focused on tackling healthcare's most daunting challenges, including cancer and Alzheimer's disease, which, by the way, threatens to be a tsunami that's going to overcome our entire country. Uh, by 2050, it'll cost our country $1 trillion if we don't have a disease uh, modifying agent. So it stands to reason that a company that's eager to help the world be well would also take corporate responsibility very seriously. And I'd like to touch briefly on a few areas we focused our resources and energies on and where we intend to make a difference. First, one area is science education because innovative R&D fuels discovery that improves and sustains our business. We actively support the teaching and the learning of science, technology, engineering, and math, or STEM, through a variety of approaches. Here are just a few. The Merck Institute for Science Education, or MISE, which is represented in that table back there, is dedicated to improving science teaching and learning in public schools. For the past 20 years, MISE has collaborated with teachers, principals, and district administrators, equipping thousands of educators with the knowledge and tools to teach science more effectively and to engage students for a lifetime of learning science. Another key initiative, I have to say, began under Ray Gilmartin's leadership in 1995 when Merck created a partnership with the United Negro College Fund, or UNCF. Since then, the UNCF Merck Science Initiative has provided fellowships, internships, and other types of support to nearly 600 outstanding African-American science students at the undergraduate, graduate, and postdoctoral levels. In addition, Ray's successor and my immediate predecessor, Dick Clark, formed a partnership with the National Alliance for Hispanic Health, which has now provided more than 100 scholarships to Hispanic high school and college students who are pursuing careers in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Those are just a few ways that we support science education through company-sponsored programs, through our philanthropy, and of course, as Ray said, through our volunteer efforts of our skilled and caring Merck employees. Ray also mentioned that another key area of public policy for us is ethics and transparency. And because we're a company that is dedicated to saving, improving, and extended lives, ethics, integrity, and values have to become bedrock issues for us. We aspire to be the most trusted healthcare company in the world, and we work in earnest to engage audiences on all sides of issues that matter. And as Ray said, we go beyond mandatory disclosure to proactively communicate key information in great detail about what we do. Political transparency is paramount for Merck because we're committed to participating constructively and responsibly in the political process. And I just want to confirm and, and support what Howard Schultz said here tonight. We are one country. We have very different visions and views, but we must come together to tackle some of the most challenging uh, issues that we face today if we're going to have a sustainable economic system in this country. So in recent years and months, Merck has engaged in a number of key issues for our country, including addressing the federal deficit and reducing our debt, revising certain regulatory requirements, including the US corporate tax code, in order to encourage innovation and support American competitiveness, and developing responsible approaches to health care, including those focused on future sustainability of Medicare. At Merck, what we do and how we do it are inextricably linked. My colleagues and I are one unwavering in our longstanding commitment to translating cutting-edge science into medically important products and to ensuring those products get to the patients who need them. We are equally committed to doing so in ways that inspire the trust and confidence of our stakeholders. So on behalf of all my colleagues, 80,000 colleagues around the world, we are deeply honored to receive this award, and we thank you sincerely.
Congratulations, Ken, and, and thank you, Ray, for that.